everyone. I'm Jeff Sununian. And I'm Markel Shea. Welcoming you back to another episode of iBerkshire's TV. This month, we're being sponsored by Berkshire Jobs, which has become the county's go-to website for employees and job seekers to connect. Later on, we'll be hearing from Jim McGrath a lot about the history of Wakona Park. But first, here are your latest headlines as being reported by your local news source, iBerkshire's.com. An inmate of the Berkshire County House of Corrections escaped custody at Berkshire Medical Center. 33-year-old Harry Chandler overpowered a sheriff's deputy and fled Berkshire Medical Center while being treated for infections in his hands. Chandler was arrested on July 3rd on a number of outstanding warrants and was being held pre-trial. The plans for new Cumberland Farms on Ashland Street in North Adams are moving forward after the Westboro-based convenience chain purchased the former city yard for $550,000. The company had been looking for a larger location close to downtown for several years. Al Scrocky is headed back to Hoosick Valley, but only temporarily. Scrocky had served as superintendent for the district for 14 years before retiring in 2012. With the departure of Superintendent John Vosberg, Scrocky was picked by the school committee to return to the post until a new superintendent is hired. Pittsfield's Commissioner of Public Utilities, David Tarosi, detailed the city's process for inspecting fire hydrants to the city council in wake of an incident earlier this year when a hydrant on Plunkett Street was shut off by contractors and firefighters arriving on scene to put out a blaze were unaware. Tarosi explained what happened in that incident, but said just about all of the rest are functioning. However, he is urging the city council to consider replacing water lines throughout the city that limits the water flow. Lanesboro and Cheshire police are teaming up to host a community bike ride on the rail trail on Saturday, July 13th. The ride will go from the Berkshire Mall to Diane's Twist Ice Cream Shop in Cheshire. The ride starts at 10 a.m. A Pittsfield woman was struck by a boat while swimming on Anota Lake. Natasha Aragoni was swimming off the shoreline when she was hit. She was transported to Berkshire Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. North Adams cut the ribbon on a brand new splash park at Knoll Field on the 4th of July. The splash pad is open from 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. throughout the summer. There's a contest shaping up for North Adams mayor as three people have now taken out nomination papers for the coroner office. Thomas Bernard announced his intention to run for a second term last month at a kickoff event at the Richmond Grill. This past week, Rachel Branch took out papers and announced on July 3rd her intent to run. Also taking out papers is Richard David Green. A Pittsfield man was killed on July 2nd in a motor vehicle accident on West Housatonic Street. Michael Lampfear, 54, of East Housatonic Street, was westbound on his motorcycle at about 7.48 a.m. when he collided with a Jeep pulling out of the intersection at Osceola Street. The sport utility vehicle was being driven by 25-year-old Abigail Hunt, who was not injured. The Pittsfield Community Development Board approved EOS Farms' permission for an outdoor marijuana growing operation on Barker Road. Two fields, consisting of 12 acres on the farm, will be leased for the operation. The business will include about two acres in total of outdoor marijuana growing and a building. Stamford, Vermont voted overwhelmingly on July 8th to continue efforts to merge school districts with Clarksburg. This would be the first interstate school district from Massachusetts, and officials on both sides of the state line have indicated support. Clarksburg is expected to vote in the next few weeks. Any merger is still a ways off and will require town meeting votes in both towns. North Adams celebrates its 21st annual Eagle Street Beach Party on July 13th, the first time it's been held on a Saturday. Some 500,000 pounds of sand donated by Specialty Minerals will turn the historic street into a sandbox. Family time begins at 3.30, followed by an adult fiesta with margaritas around 7. The Pittsfield 4th of July parade went off without a hitch this year, marching from South Street to Wakona Park. To conclude the evening, a large firework display was lit off at the ballpark. This year marks the 100th anniversary for Wakona Park. iBerkshire's Pittsfield Bureau Chief Andy McKeever started to put together a comprehensive history of the park this year, only to find out it had already been done. That's right, Mark Kell, and Andy sat down with Jim McGrath, Pittsfield's Park, Open Space, and Natural Resource Program Manager, to learn how the storied history of the park was pieced together for future generations to appreciate. This year marks the 100th year anniversary of Wakona Park. I got my t-shirt here. Now it's actually older than that. It kinda has a history of like the Field of Dreams where George Burbank built a stadium or built a baseball field on his property and then sort of leased it out. The city later purchased the park and that's the 100 year mark. And it has a storied history. Lou Gehrig played there, Sugar Ray box there. But history is only as good if somebody documents. It's if history can't exist just in in documents buried in storage somewhere. So with the anniversary, I thought, you know, hey, maybe I'll um, 
update the history and, and publish something new. So I reached out to the city's parks and open space manager, Jim McGrath, see you know, where to start. And he gave me this. This is the gift of Ann Wachowski. The former mayor spent hours, hours and hours creating this 100-something page document that has every significant event there. It's, they've had Richard Nixon's daughter was signing autographs there one night. They had Santa coming in by helicopter. She's documented uh, first life flight. This is just such a rich history. So we brought in Jim. Hi, Andy. How are you? To talk us through this, tell us Anne's effort here. Set the stage. What was going on? Yeah, so I, uh, I, I appreciate your opening sentiments that this is, a, this is the gift from Anne Wachowski. So um, we started working with Anne in 2003 on an effort to uh, nominate Wakona Park a Baseball Field and Grandstand on the historic register. Now, this whole effort began after the Civic Authority defeat in the late 90s, and the City Council and others, the Park Commission as well, uh, were looking to, uh, you know, t turning back to Wakona Park and trying to figure out a way, uh, the best way to make certain Wakona Park stays as part of the city's legacy uh, and has an opportunity for upgrades. Mm -hmm. So an effort be, uh, was begun to get the, the grandstand documented for the National Register of Historic Places. So mm -hmm. there was support from the city council, there was support from the, uh, from the park commission, and there was support from the historical commission, who at that time was led by Bob Boland. Mm -hmm. um, and Bob had a unique connection with Anne in that they both worked together on the historic Colonial Theater restoration project. Mm -hmm. So I think Bob pulled Anne in, and we began to assemble a local team of Anne and Bob, uh, and myself, and David Potts, and Councillor Guzzo. Mm -hmm. And really, it was Anne Wachowski that did the majority of the legwork uh, mm -hmm. to really document the history of the park, uh, those significant events, uh, uh, those significant uh, baseball players and all of those other uh, community events that have happened in the park over these many years. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the sort of creation of this? Uh, the Parks Department was up at what is the Springside House at yeah. the time. Um, I mean, how often was Anne there? Yeah. I mean, how was the, the sort of getting documents? I mean, what was that all like? Yeah, so Anne, uh, you know, really took this challenge on, uh, you know, uh, with gusto. Um, you know, I was relatively new to the city and to the Parks Department. Uh, mm -hmm. This was in 2003 that we started working toward this effort. Um, and uh, um, I didn't have tons of time to devote to research at the library and research through the old Park Department scrapbooks. And that's where Anne came in. Um, so we established, I think, what were weekly meetings early on in the process. Um, uh, you know, I made available to her all of, uh, like I indicated, the scrapbooks, all of the uh, old files that had been held by Vin Hebert in the, in the, uh, the former park superintendent. Um, you know, property records, maps, anything that we had that might be valuable mm -hmm. uh, as part of the narrative and the historical narrative of Wakona Park. So Anne would come up to the Springside House and we'd have meetings and uh, we'd make loads of cop photocopies. Um, and she spent oodles of time at the Berkshire Athenaeum in front of the microfilm machines researching the old Berkshire Eagle archives. So, um, you know, Anne. Uh, I really cherished those opportunities to meet with Anne because it wasn't only chatter about Wakona Park, but it was chatter about my role in the Parks mm -hmm. Department and sort of politics and current initiatives, and I really valued those conversations. Mm -hmm. Now, she, I mean, her fingerprints are kind of all over the city, not just not just in sort of this, but I mean, she was in yeah. the Colonial Theater, as you mentioned. <clears throat> um, but can you tell us a little bit about, you know, who she was? I mean, you, you saw with her. Yeah. You, you, you were with her all the time during this process. Yeah. So, I mean, what was she like? So my first introduction to Anne was simply that she was a former mayor. Um, but as I began to understand Anne's background a little bit more, I understood that she was uh, a very skilled engineer, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the first woman engineers uh, uh, in the field of, I think, thermodynamics is, is, was, her, was her field of choice, um, uh, and aerodynamics. Um, uh, she was on the Pittsfield School Committee for a number of years. Uh, of course, she was a mayor of Pittsfield. 
Um, she was a philanthropist and just donated her time to many organizations across the city. She was bright, she was articulate, she was savvy, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she just wanted to share her skills and her talents mm -hmm. um, w with anyone, and, uh, and certainly this Wakona Park historical documentation was and is a gift from Ann Wachowski. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you and I went through all these these documents the other day, and we found a nice little note about a, a baby shower. Yeah. I got to hear if you, you just sort of, yeah. you know, read it. And, so uh, I'll just set the stage. So uh, <laughs> following the project, uh, Anne had in her possession uh, uh, a number of uh, important documents that mm -hmm. she wanted to make certain got back to me and got filed uh, appropriately. So she wrote me this note uh, <laughs> on, on the cover letter. Um, she says, I was thinking about you last weekend when I was making a Jack and Jill baby shower cake to feed 40 uh, people. It was a 12 inch diameter, four layer chocolate cake and the wheels were a pair of six inch diameter, three layer chocolate cakes attached via a four layer chocolate crescent shaped cake suspension system. <laughs> And then she ended it, I think, with a smiley face, and uh, yeah. you know, still enjoy engineering challenges. You know, whether it's uh, in mm -hmm. the real world or in her kitchen as she's making a cake. So that was yeah. Ann Wachowski, always um, sort of uh, dreaming, designing, mm -hmm. um, taking on challenges, uh, uh, and uh, and just being, you know, uh, just being an amazing woman that she that mm -hmm. she was. Now let's talk about the park itself. Um, like we said, it was it was George Burbank's field. City took it over in mm -hmm. uh, what year was the city taken over? Uh, in exactly? 1919, there was a transfer of the parcels that was a, to the city. What are some of the highlights of this park's history? Uh, what are some of the things that stand out to you? Yeah, so the so the the, the properties were transferred to the city in 1919. Uh, there was a so we we took possession of the ball field and uh, and a very kind of simple wooden grandstand. And I think between 1919 and in the 40s, when we started working toward building the new grandstand, uh, the old grandstand started to get into disrepair. And and I think there might have been uh, a recognized need that a new grandstand would absolutely be important uh, at this place, which uh, which had always been, and, and the city had envisioned into the future, a place for community gathering, not only for baseball, but for other athletic pursuits as well. And I, uh, I think some of the original plans showed that uh, a perimeter track uh, around the baseball field was to be constructed for the purposes of bicycle races, mm -hmm. and then a separate area for foot races. So, so, you know, Wakona Park was a, was a place for for athletic pursuits and, mm -hmm. and not just baseball. And of course, football was always envisioned as a, a field for football at Wakona Park. Yeah. But the grandstand, when the when the new grandstand was constructed, we we started discussing that in the 40s. It was uh, put on hiatus during World War II, mm -hmm. and shortly after 1945, uh, conversations really ramped up. Uh, the, the the grandstand was designed by Bradley and Gas Architects. Mm -hmm. It, the, the, the project was put out to bid, and uh, the bid ultimately was $114,000 for mm -hmm. the construction of yeah. the grandstand, yeah. which is, it, you, you look <laughs> at that cost today and you say, my God, that, wow. How about it? So. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, I mean, this park has been home to so many things, and I don't think a lot of people realize how you know the park is not just the the field, but I mean, there's <clears> the, there's an old dump and yeah, an old burn yeah, dump. Um, yeah, and I mean, the baseball history is great. I mean, we used, before the Red Sox moved to Pawtucket, you know, they were here. Yeah. Um, and I think we found somewhere with soccer. They were pushing soccer, yeah. uh, circuses, um, all kinds of things. Pageants and yeah. plays and concerts, uh, uh, firemen musters. Mm -hmm. You know, every kind of kind of community event. Uh, you know, sort of dra gravitated to and drifted through Wakona Park. Mm -hmm. You know, it really has been our community gathering space. And indeed, shortly after 9/11. Uh, um, that is where uh, this community gathered. They marched from North Street down to Wakona Park and held a silent vigil for, uh, for those that were lost on 9-11. So it has been our community space. And, um, and that's really exciting to me that we have mm -hmm. that. Uh, you know, maybe a little rough around the edges, but it's ours, and it's served us well for many, many years. What has that done for the city? Is yeah. to be able to have all, to be able to have this. Yeah, well, I think the historical register did two things for mm -hmm. us. It, it uh, um, the, the effort leading up to the historical register got us massive amounts of documentation on the historical narrative. You know, again, Anne was piecing together all of these disparate mm -hmm. parts, and she 
co combine them into this chronology and ultimately into the National Register application. So we have that as the permanent record of the history. What we also have is an acknowledgement that Wakona Park uh, you know, has played a special role in this city. And just simply through documenting that and telling those stories or, uh, or shedding light on those stories, um, it really has uh, uh, shown how important this ball field and this grandstand and this park are to the city. Mm -hmm. um, but in a more practical sense, after the designation, we were able to tell a narrative to the Commonwealth uh, and receive some grant monies mm -hmm. uh, to help preserve the grandstand. And uh, um, there was almost a million dollars invested in 2007 and 2008 with bathroom restoration, um, a new scoreboard, a new roof on the grandstand, other work in the grandstand, um, new safety netting. So we really gave the park and you know, not only the grandstand, but the field and the parking lot as well. The parking lot uh, was, was always a real muddy mess and we, mm -hmm. we sort of changed the drainage a little bit and put down some new surfacing to make it more usable after flooding. So the, the historical designation helped us attract additional grant funds. Mm -hmm. Great. So, you know, I really appreciate you coming on, um, and I really appreciate telling the story of, of, of the former mayor's yeah. effort to get this, because while this does have a story, the park has a storied history, uh, I mean, her efforts to, to get this all down and yeah. documented is just as integral as anything that's happened at the park. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and in your introduction, you mentioned how history is only as good as uh, as the as documentation and folks wanting to understand and read that and have access to it. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is a document that we can make available to anyone who asks. We'll digitize this and we can put this uh, uh, up in the cloud or we can make it available on a disk or, or even email it out. So for folks who are still interested in, in sort of the more fine nitty gritty details of the history mm -hmm. of the park, reach out to me at City Hall. I'd be happy to provide this information. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming on, Jim. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. So. Does your business have vacancies to fill? Do you need new employees to reach your sales goals? BerkshireJobs.com, Berkshire County's local job site, is the leading choice for finding you the best and the brightest talent. A proven solution for hundreds of Berkshire businesses. BerkshireJobs.com is fast, affordable, effective, guaranteed. Go online today, post a job, and you could be interviewing tomorrow. Find the people you need or your money back, guaranteed. BerkshireJobs.com. Log on today. Before we go, we're going to take you inside Anna's kitchen for some great cooking tips. Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I will show you what to do with herbs when you bring them from the market. We have parsley and cilantro. What we do first is fill a large bowl with cold water. If your herbs are a little bit tired, you can take some ice, dump it into your water, and then put the herbs inside the bowl and let them sit for a good five minutes. You can leave them there longer, as long as the water is cold, and they will perk up and be fresh again. You will also need a salad spinner. I suggest that you have all these things ready when you, are, when you want to proceed with what you need to do so that you don't have to run around the house and looking for this and that. You also need a plastic bag and a roll of paper towel. And when you swish your herbs like that, then all the dirt that's stuck there, all the sand or bugs or anything that might be there is going to sink to the bottom. You lift out your herbs and move them to your salad spinner. Cover it and then spin. And then all the water will rush off. Your herbs will be nice and fresh and dry. And at this point, all you need to do is take some paper towel. You will take your herbs, leave them on your stems, you will be destemming them later. And then just spread them a little bit and then gently roll them so that there is still a little water clinging to them that will keep them fresh. However, extra water will be helping them rot instead of staying nice and fresh. 
and then you stick them into the plastic bag and close it and stick it in your refrigerator and your herbs will be waiting for you there they will be good if they are fresh to begin with they will stay there for good five days maybe even longer so when you want to use them you just take them out snip them uh, with cilantro you can even use little those little stems just cut off the bigger stems and you are good to go good luck Thanks for joining us for this episode of iBerkshire's TV. Please join us again and stay tuned for all the latest news and community stories. And a thank you to our sponsor, Berkshire Jobs. Mm -hmm.